Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, got any wacky politicians where you live? I'll bet you do. So I'm going to share a doozy who uh, luckily doesn't represent my area, although I've got some doozies in my area too. Uh, but he is in North Dakota and actually represents the city of Bismarck, so we'll talk about him. But uh, let's meet some pens. And oh yes, by the way, this is sun on my face. I was working outdoors. I do that from time to time, you know. So we'll talk about that too. So let's take a look at some pens. All right, so these are the pens I've been using uh, last couple of weeks while I've been missing in action. From left to right, we have a Pilot, Pilot Justice 95. We have what I call Senator Cracked Blind Cap because it has a cracked blind cap. Um, and I don't know its model number. We have a Pelican 400NN. We have a Parker Vector Extra Large. We have the Lobby 2000 Aurora 88 Modern in the Giove finish. We have a Toes Pencala EMI 101 from Zagreb, Croatia in the 1970s. So I guess it was in Yugoslavia. And finally, we have a Senator President. As always, I will present their writing sample in this Cognitive Surplus Theory Notebook. All right, so it is Friday the 13th, and who knows what's going to happen on a day like today. So my first pen, I just did its uh, revisit. The second revisit, I think this is the only pen I've revisited twice on the channel in my Survivor Pens series. This is the Pilot Justice 95. I don't have the striped finish. I have the barleycorn finish. I like it a lot. Um, this is one of those pens I keep thinking, oh, it's a gimmick. And then I write with them like, oh, but I really like it. So open it up. It's got a little ink splish splashed around. Uh, its defining feature is, of course, this cantilever, which can be advanced for somewhat stiffer writing, which I prefer for math, or retracted for somewhat softer writing. So this week I'll write soft and I'll try to remember next week to write hard. So this is the Pilot Justice 95. It does have a fine nib on it. I guess there's a medium option also. The ink in it is Noodlers, Black Swan, In English Rose. Just a really nice color. I uh, I don't use, a, I, well I shouldn't say I don't use, but there aren't a lot of red inks that I really like, but this is one I like. It's just uh, dark enough, muted enough, has some really fun shading. Just a really nice ink. Of course, be careful. It's a Noodler's ink. Sometimes they are a little bit on the slow side to dry. My next pen, I fondly call Senator Cracked Blind Cap because this blind cap is cracked. And one of these days, I'm sure the crack will split unless I figure out how to heal it. See, there it is. So this was given to me by a pen pal. And uh, I, I have a very difficult time finding the names of uh, the vintage Senator pens. So this is no exception. So I make up names. I've got the Silver Fox. I've got, you know, all kinds of... Actually, I gave away Senator Cummerbund to a, a fellow YouTuber. But uh, I still have plenty of Senator pens. 
Um, Senator cracked blind cap and the ink in it is Lamy Bronze. And you might have noticed while I was writing how the uh, noodlers up here just took on a glorious hue. So Lamy Bronze is an ink I bought. And I stopped in a store in Fargo that sells fountain pens. It's called Zanbros. And they really didn't have anything that interested me. So I said, um, I'll buy a bottle of ink. Because I felt like I should buy something to support them. And it's actually a very nice orange. Only it turns out it's a special edition orange. So, yeah, I like it. But uh, it's not like I'll be getting more of it. So I'm working toward using it up. My next pen is the lovely from the 1950s Pelican 400NN with a very nice flexible nib. So this was a pretty common pen. So if you can find one, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Uh, they do have some problems. Some of them use polystyrene to make the nib collar. And uh, yeah, good luck on that. So I think this is an extra fine. But I don't remember and I don't see it written anywhere. So yeah, even though I'm wearing my glasses, I yeah, we'll just go with uh, that without naming the nib. <laughs> How about that? And the ink in it, of course, is Ackermann who somebody may have refilled this pen with it because he was enjoying writing with it so much. Grunmarkt Smaragd. Which is basically emerald green grocers. So it's supposed to, I guess, echo the idea of a green grocers market. This time of year, you know, the uh, farmer's markets and so on are coming to an end as uh, cold temperatures move in. My garden got zapped by frost and she's done. But this was a hideous year for a garden uh, for a lot of reasons that I'll have to get into one of these days. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad it's over to put the whole poor thing out of its misery. This is the Parker Vector Extra Large. I should say XL. I'm assuming XL stands for extra large. I really like this pen. There's a little bit of fluff on the end of the nib, so let me just wipe that off, because I think that's why I had that hard start there. So Parker Vector, extra large. Mine is a medium nib, and the ink in it is Sailor storia it's a uh, one of their one of their line of pigmented inks that they kind of had a circus theme going on i don't know if they still make them uh the retailer i bought this from no longer carries them so make of that what you will but it is a nice blue black kind of color and uh Again, I'm I'm on this quest to use up some inks. In fact, uh, in a little bit, I'm going to show you a pen where I used up an ink. But it's not this next one. This next one has a ways to go yet. This is my Lamy 2000. One of my favorite pens. This one has a fine nib in it. And the ink in it is Pelican Edelstein Onyx, which is a, you know, not my favorite black ink, but it's a decent black ink. It's obscenely expensive. So, you know, I bought the one bottle because I was experimenting with black inks for a while and heaven forbid I experiment with samples. And anyway, it's one of my many bottles of black ink that I have to use up. So I am concentrating on certain colors and using them up. My next pen is the beautiful Aurora 88. This is the Giove finish. This is, oops, this is uh, supposed to be a Jupiter finish. And 
Again, don't see Jupiter in the colors, but it was so pretty I wanted it. So there we go. So Aurora 88. This one has a broad nib in it. And do you smell that? I'll hold it closer to the camera so you can smell it. Yeah. That ink is a got a nice smell. Um, I don't know why I wrote an equal sign there. But this is a scented ink. It is Deatramentis. Apple Blossom. I haven't quite decided what ink is going to take the place of this one in my let's use it up category. Um, possibly Noodler's Matahari's Cordial, but I really love Noodler's Matahari's Cordial, so I don't know that that's going to be the one, so we'll see. But yeah, I was really surprised when this pen sucked all but a few dregs dry, and I just thought, oof, that's not enough to put in anything. So with this pen, we'll voyage to Zagreb, Croatia. This is a Toz Pencala EMI 101. So uh, Toz was actually originally founded as Moster Pencala. Oh, and it has... Oh, come on, dude. There we go has one of those vintage Bach gold nibs. Uh, Toes Pencala was originally founded as Moster Pencala. Um, and then World War II happened. Uh, one of the founders, the Moster of the company, was Jewish. And again, World War II happened. Uh, the other founder was Polish. And he was a bit of a daredevil and died before World War II. After the war, this was, of course, taken over by communists and uh, turned into toes. And uh, well, toward the end of the communist era and uh, a little bit after, they tried to make a go of it as a pen company, and it didn't go so well. They are no longer in business, sadly. But in their day, they made... This is one of those vintage companies that I always look for when I am in the mood to shop for vintage pens. Now, of course, I always want to find a new manufacturer from buying the East, uh, behind the Iron Curtain. But, you know, what happened to a lot of them, like Central Pen in uh, Yugos or Czechoslovakia, is it was actually a bunch of old manufacturers that were just said, no! Oh, it's communism. We don't need a bunch of pen manufacturers competing any, against each other. We just need one. So, uh, you know, make of that what you will. And my final pen. Yeah, it's 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 hibernated for a while. I have a senator president, and this is my senator president with the gold nib. And as I was telling Hemingway Jones when I did his live streams. We'll talk about that later in the video. When I did his live stream earlier this week, uh, this one is a supposed to be not a you know Mont Blanc one forty nine, but it is reminiscent. Senator President. This has a broad nib, and uh, I'm going to emphasize that it's gold because I do have one with a steel nib. And the ink in it is Omas Gray. Uh, an ink, by the way, that you can no longer buy. And I'm trying to use it up. I'm not sentimental about it. I mean, it's an okay gray, but it's nothing special. It does some nice shading. But I've used shades of gray that I like even better. Sure does look good in this pen though, but again, I've used grays I like better. A little bit of stub-like character to it. But I'll tell you what's the most interesting thing about this pen. <laughs> um, 
Tell me how this came to be in the United States. Now, I'm going to guess most of my viewers... Oops, there's some fingerprints. Ew, icky. <laughs> most of my viewers do not speak Ukrainian. But you should be able to make out that this top word here is minister, ministry. Uh, what, what this is actually saying is that this, this is a pen from the Ukrainian Ministry of Coal. So, a couple questions. You know, Senator is now a company that makes pens that are branded. You know, so if Ford wants to do pens that say Ford on them, they'll hire Senator to make a bunch of pens that say Ford on them. Uh, they don't make pens like this anymore. But uh, this is a very classy pen. This wouldn't have been a cheap pen. And uh, Are we just giving it away? You know, how did this pen come to be? I'd like to know the story. But anyway, Ukrainian Ministry of Coal. Open up, FBI. What? Just a second. Let's figure out what that is. Oh, come on. What do you guys want? Oh, hey, ow, ow, stop it. Hey, I don't have any shoes on. It's cold out here. So what a time I've had. Uh, they put a bag over my head almost right away. But I know I rode my car for part of it. I, it sounded like a helicopter for a while, an airplane, another helicopter. I, I was all sorts of confused. Anyway, I ended up ha being, being brought in front of this guy named Jim. And he starts talking to me about Hunter. And I'm just like, I don't hunt. I, I, hunting is boring. I don't hunt. And, oh boy, he thought I was mouthing off to him. Like, dude, I don't hunt. <laughs> what, what can I say? It's not my deal. And uh, he said, no, Hunter. And I said, no, I am no Hunter. That's right. Tried it when I was a kid and didn't like it. And then he, uh, you know, questions about Ukraine and I don't know what all. And then, then he got off on some tangent about college wrestlers. I'm like, dude, I teach high school. I don't know any college wrestlers. And, you know, it just went downhill from there. And this lady from named Marjorie, this blonde lady, came in. And she had this giant poster of a naked middle-aged man. I'm like, I don't need to see that. If I want to look at a naked middle-aged man, I'll look at myself the next time I take a shower. And they thought I was mouthing off again. And it was looking pretty tense because I think they were going to unleash the rubber hoses on me. But then uh, they got word that uh, some guy with goofy hair was going to go after some guy, some guy named Kevin. And they all just departed. So I'm just like, well... They forgot to lock the door, so I'm out of here. And I started skedaddling. Um, I got arrested by these guys in black suits. <laughs> they all had earpieces in, and I'm just like, really, can I catch a break? And they took me somewhere else. Uh, again, the bag over the head and all that business. But uh, they took me into a building, and this old guy came in with this German shepherd. He kept calling it Commander. And he says, he'll bite you. I'm just like, this old guy's wearing sneakers. Why are you wearing sneakers with a suit? That's weird. I think they were Skechers. Maybe? But anyway, he, he's talking to me about Hunter and Ukraine. And finally, he asks to see the pen. And he looks at it and he says, Ukrainian Ministry of Coal? What does that have to do with anything at all? And they're all like, I don't speak Ukrainian. So he let me go. <laughs> Thanks, old guy. So I got to hitchhike home and finally made it. And boy, I'm just exhausted after all that. You know, I was going to have a whole story about why pens in use was, didn't happen and why I was busy at work. And I really didn't expect to get kidnapped by uh, the FBI after while recording my last episode of Pens and You, so it's a week late, I'm sorry. And the week before that, I'm sorry, I was just busy, and uh, we'll try to do better. I'll try to record on weekends, and uh, I guess not bring out any more Ukrainian pens. I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm recovering. 
Uh, going to Bismarck tomorrow. Uh, was going to go to a cross-country meet, but I guess I'm just going to Bismarck. And I might shave and clean up. And, you know, I, I think the bruises and welts are down. And we'll just see what happens, pen-wise. And uh, hopefully I'm healed up and looking decent enough by f Sunday for my live stream on Sunday. So, uh, oh, and I've got notes for a uh, driving video, but we'll put that together here, too. So I uh, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.